Hello, and welcome back to This Week in Magic Online Finance. And this week, I'm on vacation, which means no risers, no fallers, no market trends. I am on a beach somewhere far, far away from my camera and microphone. Don't worry though, you don't have to wait for me to come back to get that good, good content. This week, I am coming at you with 10 tips for understanding Magic Online Finance. If you're familiar with how prices and trends work in the paper game, but maybe you're less familiar with how they work online, this is the video for you. Number one, prices move much faster online. Now this is because if I buy a card in paper, I have to wait for somebody to, you know, put it in one of these sleeves, I have to wait for them to mail it to me, then I have to get it in the mail, which takes forever, and then I have to turn it around and try and sell it from there. Online, I can go over to my keyboard, I can press a couple of buttons, and now I no longer own any copies of the Power 9. Number two, cards also lose value very, very quickly online. So in the paper game, if a deck starts losing market share, you've got plenty of time to back out, sometimes a couple of weeks before the market starts to catch up. Online, if a deck that's supposed to say put up good numbers at a pro tour doesn't end up having a good day two conversion percentage, a card can crash within minutes. Number three, the Magic Online market is much more efficient than the paper market. In paper, if I buy a card for a dollar, it's going to need to gain at least a couple of bucks before I can cash out for a profit once you factor in shipping fees, eBay fees, things like that. Online, the difference between the buy price and the sell price is generally very, very slim. So you can speculate on a card that you think is going to go up just a little bit, and online, that might actually be a smart buy. In paper, less so. Number four, cracking packs. It is a no-no in paper magic. It is a quadruple no-no in magic online. The difference between the value of a sealed booster pack and the expected value of the cards inside is much higher because some people just use the program for drafting. Do not ever crack packs. Number five, casual favorites like pretty well everything in my Momir Vig deck here really aren't worth all that much online. Chromatic Lantern is a $12 card in paper primarily because of Commander. It's less than 50 cents online. Doubling season, $60 in paper, under $3 online. 1v1 Commander is changing this a little, but even that is being treated like a competitive format with only the top staples holding their value and gaining right now. Number six, in Paper Magic, there is a 10 cent floor on bulk rares. No matter what, you can always get at least 10 cents for any old clone you got laying around the house. Magic Online, not so much. Bulk rares tend to stay at a penny, sometimes even less if it's a really, really bad one. This is actually a good thing though if you like speculating on bulk rares for competitive play because you can get a hundred, sometimes even more for a dollar. Number seven. Now bulk mythic rares, this is not a bulk mythic rare, is it? Bulk mythic rares are actually worth more online sometimes than they are in paper. This is because you need them for set redemption, you need a full set of anything you're redeeming. So leading up to that redemption window, the demand for bulk mythics can actually be higher online than in paper. This is especially true for foil bulk mythics. Number eight, don't expect a one-to-one -one correlation between prices in paper and prices online. For example, Time Walk, generally you can get it for about 15 tickets online. Whereas Infernal Tutor, actually the ninth most expensive card in the entire legacy format on MTGO. That said, generally if a card is good and expensive in paper, it's good and expensive online. Number nine. In paper magic, as long as you're paying attention to the trends in standard and modern, you pretty much can ignore everything else. Online, legacy, vintage, and even popper are vibrant formats, and shifts in the metagame can affect prices significantly, so make sure you're paying attention to all the competitive formats. Number ten. Make sure you develop a good understanding of the bot system on magic online. Most of your transactions are going to be with bots instead of individual users, and that's okay. The smallest unit of currency online is the event ticket, but a bot chain can actually remember your credit for next time. So developing a relationship with a network of bots that you like to use behooves you for both buying and selling. MTGO traders, they sponsor this video series. They're very reliable. I recommend going with them. That's all I got for you this week. Come back next time when I tell you the best times to buy and the best times to sell. Don't forget to like and subscribe.